a lot of people think Microsoft Teams is just for chatting and maybe having some online meetings. However, there are lots of different collaboration tools available. And one of those is the tabs within channels. You can have documents, tools, websites, and many other things embedded into a channel in Teams. If this sounds helpful to you, you'll want to watch this video as I do a quick overview of Microsoft Teams channel tabs today on Tuesday Tech Training. Hello and welcome to Tuesday Tech Training. My name is Jennifer Stewart. I'm the owner of Gateway Productivity and I'm a tech and productivity trainer. Today I want to teach you about channel tabs. Now, if you are lost already and you're kind of new to Microsoft Teams, you might want to watch some of the other videos. There is one about an overview of Microsoft Teams itself. There's one that's an overview of channels. So if you need to understand those a little bit better, you might want to watch those videos. If you are well aware of what channels are, then let's dive into the tabs that exist in channels. First of all, what are these channel tabs? So you know that you have a team and the different pieces of the team are the channels, which are places to organize your conversation. But not only that, you can use your channels to organize collaboration as well. So in each of those channels, let's for instance say that we're talking about the marketing department and we have a tab that's about the newsletter. So you can have your conversations about the newsletter in that channel, but then you can also have these channel tabs that have different documents maybe you're collaborating on. Maybe it's a website that everyone has to refer to constantly. And so you can have that link or an embed of that website right there in Teams. Maybe it is a Microsoft plan that you've done in Planner. You can have that embedded into a channel tab. There are lots of different options available. The idea here is to keep people in one place so they don't have to go from one website to another website to a server with documents. They don't have to go to all these places. They can stay in one place in Teams and then go to Outlook for their email. The easiest way to understand channel tabs is to see them in action. So let's go do that now. So if anyone is confused by what they're seeing, this is the new Teams. So if you have a box at the bottom that talks about starting a new post or a conversation, that is the older version of Teams. And all of the same stuff still works here. I just wanted to point out that if mine looks different than yours, I'm in the new Teams. And I can see that up here. I have a little button that says I'm in the new Teams. Regardless of which version you're in, your tabs live up here. And so I'm in a channel, my team is the marketing department, my channel is general, which I will automatically have with any team that I create. And then you're given a files tab automatically. And this is where you can store all your different files. This can take the place of a server or of a share drive is what some people have called it. This you will automatically have, you might have notes automatically, but what we're talking about is the little plus sign. When we click on the plus, we have lots of options of things that we could add to our channel tabs. And if you wanna see all the options, you can click here to see all. And these are typically the easiest things to implement. If you want to add additional apps, you can look into that, um, but I'm not gonna go quite that deep today. We're just gonna do an overview of a few different types of channel tabs you might wanna have. First, let's look at if you have a shared Excel document. We can go to Excel. If you already have many files loaded, you might be able to go to the My Files or the Recent to get to what you're looking for. I'm gonna go a little deeper so you can see the amount of things that you have access to here. You can see there are access points that are connected to your Teams and your SharePoint. Mine is gonna be a little bit further down, so I'm gonna go here. And now you can see the marketing team, which is what we're in anyway, is here. And I can go here and I can see what documents I have available. There is a newsletter document that I want to share with everyone, so I'm going to put it in the general channel. I can go here and I can choose my newsletter tracking and I can say save. Now it will automatically pull the live document 
into this tab. And it might give you a couple pop-ups, especially if it's the first time you've done it. And so you can see here, now I have in the general so that everyone can see what's going on. I have this tracking spreadsheet. You could also have it in the newsletter channel and that would sync with each other. So if you made changes in one place, it would make changes in the other place as well. And you also can have multiple people in this document at the same time and it will show initials for the different people so that you know who's working in the document. This can be huge if you have documents that you collaborate on all the time. Are you learning something new from this video and you'd like to see more videos? If so, you can click the subscribe button that's below the video. Once you do that, you'll see a bell icon. If you click on the bell, you'll receive notifications each time a new video is posted. Another tab that you could add, we'll click on the plus to add tab. Another one is tasks by planner. So if your company is using planner to create kind of project plans for your company or for your different departments, you can tie that in. If you already have an existing plan, you can go here to use an existing plan from this team, or you can start a new one. So we'll just leave this as tasks. We're gonna create a new plan. We're gonna save that. And again, this ties into Microsoft Planner. It is creating a plan in Microsoft Planner called Tasks. And here I can add my tasks. I can also add additional buckets. So if this is something to do, then maybe this is in process. And then maybe I can have another one that says done. So as things are being worked on, you can move them through the different buckets to be able to see where things are and the entire department or team can see what's happening at a glance. Another tab that you could add, we'll click on add tab again. We'll do one more. Sometimes we refer to websites frequently. So maybe you want to embed a website here. In this case, we'll just use Google. Do pay attention here. It does want that HTTPS colon slash slash. So we'll go ahead and put that in. Okay, and we'll save this. And one thing I didn't refer to is this right here, post to the channel about this tab. So what this does is it's automatically giving a post that we'll look at in a minute that says, hey, there's a new tab. You probably want to check it out. So we'll save this so you can see what it looks like. And you can see it embeds the website right here and you can use it. This can save people a lot of time by being able to just go to a tab in Teams, go to a website where they need to make references and then go straight back to working on whatever they were working on in Teams. So we'll look at what those posts looked like. You can see it automatically said, I added a tab, check it out. And that way everyone's informed about these new tabs. And then I could put some more information in there about how to use the tab or if there's any questions about it. There are also some settings available in your tabs. If you do a right click or if you have a flat trackpad, it might be a two finger tap. We're gonna right click on this. You can open the tab in a new window, open in a browser, lots of different options here. You can rename if it automatically added a name and you want to change that or add to it, you can. And for the document, it will not change the name of the document. So for newsletter tracking, it wouldn't change the name of the document, just the tab. And then you also have some additional settings here. If you needed to go deeper into a website or if there was a broken link or something like that for the tasks by planner. If we went to settings, the settings are a little different. It brings you to that initial screen. And then the thing that I really wanted to point out is if you right click, you have the remove option. So if you have a document that you're collaborating on and you no longer need it, you can go and remove that tab. A couple of other tabs you might use in the same way that you can have an Excel document with our newsletter tracking here. You could have just a static PDF that sits there if it's a reference document for everyone. You could also have a tab that goes to your SharePoint. If you are using SharePoint for your share drive or all of your company files, you can have a tab that goes directly to that. And as you saw here in the tab, 
You have lots of other options as well. PowerPoints, document libraries, lists if you're using those. The opportunities are endless here, and with the idea being that everyone can stay in one place to work on all the things that have to do with their job. If you still feel like you need some help with this or any other tech challenge, feel free to schedule a tech stress breakthrough call with me. You can do that by clicking the heart in the monitor that's above me now, or you can go to my website, which is gatewayproductivity.com, and click on the Let's Talk button to schedule a time. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.